I'm warning you. If you ever- Don't warn me anything. Just go away. I'll handle this myself. It's time I handled you. You think I need that? So we are here to talk about Electric Dreams, a 1984 science fiction love story. Now this will actually make its Blu-ray debut on the 31st of July 2017 by Second Sight Films. And if you get it early, you'll actually get a limited edition slipcase. So obviously get those pre-orders in now if you want. And it's the first time it's ever been on Blu-ray. So, in case you haven't heard of it, let's discuss Electric Dreams. So, I, I was sure I had seen this film before, but having watched it for this review, I have no memory of it. So, I'm not 100% sure whether I have seen it or not. Well, I, I have now, so let's discuss. So, this one uh, is directed by Steve Barron and stars Lenny Von Dolan and uh, Virginia Madden, what I believe is her uh, first uh, on-screen feature-length film. And uh, I was convinced it was Matt McCoy in the lead here before I actually looked at the, the cast list and Lenny Von Dolan. Uh, no, they look the same if you ask me, <laughs> but there you go. Also stars uh, Maxwell Caulfield, who of course is playing a douche as he plays in every single role. The story here is obviously set in 1984 and it's an interesting watching it now in 2017 because it's a technology-based film. And uh, it's essentially but an AI. Now, this uh, this kind of uh, this guy called Miles is a bit of a nebbish, nerdy type of guy, and uh, he kind of is talked into buying this computer to kind of organise his life. And this is obviously 1984 we're talking about, so they weren't kind of commonplace in the, in homes at that sort of period of time. And uh, just around the same time, he has this kind of like. Uh, beautiful neighbour played by Virginia Madsen move in kind of upstairs and she's this kind of uh, musician. So uh, Miles buys this computer and he decides to kind of like mess around with it and hook up his whole flat to it in, uh, so everything's connected even though things really didn't happen like that in those days. And uh, three, a, a number of accidents including spilling alcohol on it, it suddenly develops a life of its own and becomes an AI which both helps and hinders Miles' uh, romantic interests and his life in general. So let's discuss a little further about Electric Dreams. So this really is a product of its time, and it's very interesting watching the kind of technology. It's almost like when you watch the original Star Trek series and you see things like the, um, the technology they use there, basically, and the kind of almost how... A lot of that is now commonplace in today's today's world. It's very much uh, like that in a way in things like the internet and um, other things that you have all, the, all this connectivity that we now have in 2017 that really was just science fiction back in 1984. Uh, and, you know, you have lots of kind of like 80s tech here on display. It's quite funny. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense, I'll be honest with you, the kind of obviously when, you, when you're watching it, now being somewhat more tech savvy in this day and age, you're thinking that doesn't really make a lot of sense. But it was, back then, I guess it was people didn't really know. It's very, it reminded me a little bit of weird science, but um, without the kind of the the adventure and the kind of the more of the sexy stuff. It's more of like um, you know, just the computer itself develops an AI, and, it, and uh, again, watching films more in more the modern age with AI. You kind of realise that actually this, you know, this computer may be a bit, a uh, bit of a kind of psychopath in the way that it's kind of it, it, it does things basically. That maybe it, it seemed more playful back then. Uh, so the actual story itself, I've got to say, is a bit slow. Um, it's quite, it's charming. It's almost a musical. This film is actually quite. If not, it's not, they don't exactly break into song, but there is quite a few kind of musical breaks in this film. So in some ways it is a bit of a musical, and obviously in the 80s there's lots of kind of 80s pop tunes in there. But the story itself is is pretty slow, and is kind of a, a weird love story. But I don't know. To me, the, the chemistry was didn't really seem real. I mean, the um, 
the character Miles seems like a bit of a creep, if I'm honest. I mean, again, this is maybe looking at it in, a, in, in the eyes of a of a man in 2017. It seems a little bit of a creeper to me. Um, so watching it now, you know, it has the, definitely has that kind of that 80s charm, but it doesn't really try. It, it's aged badly, is what I'm, I, I guess I'm saying. But it's very. If you are interested in, a, if you're curious about how things were back then and kind of take you back to those days, you know, you may be interested in checking it out. It has a certain charm, like I've said. And Virginia Madsen's very, very sweet in this, and she makes, you know, for quite the kind of likeable kind of love interest. But not a lot actually happens, to be quite honest, and the actual, uh, the computer stuff just seems to, I don't know, just seems to come out of nowhere in a lot of the cases, and just things, things seem to happen for... No real reason. I don't feel the character of Edgar, who is the computer, you don't really understand his motivations or its motivations and what it actually wants. I mean, we, we, we're sort of told it wants to understand love, but, but what, to what end? We don't actually know. So, definitely a curio piece if you are a fan of 80s nostalgia and you like a good old kind of like uh, romantic love story then this may be a jam, but for me, I found it a bit slow, and the characters, and the kind of the story, and the kind of technology has all aged very much, and it's more of a, a very much a product of its time, and I don't think it would appeal massively to today's audiences, unless they're watching it purely for a nostalgia kick. So I'll give this movie a 5 out of 10, but if you are a uh, obviously a collector of Blu-rays, you may want to check it out, because like I said, it's never been on Blu-ray before, and we'll initially have that limited run with a slipcase. Anyway, 5 out of 10 for me. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.